Girl, you told the man you're walking red flag and he believed you. When people tell you who they are, believe them. When people show you who they are, believe them. Like, what is that, my Angelou? Like, come on. Hey y'all, long time no see. This is literally my fifth time recording this introduction. I don't know why that's like the hardest part for me with YouTube videos. Uh, so if this one sucks, this is just the one that's gonna have to be what it is. You know why you clicked on the video? I'm doing Love is Blind review. And I was looking back at my channel um, to see when I did the last reviews of season four. And I didn't realize they were literally only five to six months old. I'm like, how much are y'all filming? The because they released two seasons of the ultimatum in between along with additional episodes for Love is Blind season four, like those boring behind, like after the ultra episode episodes. So whatever, I don't know about y'all, but these first couple episodes emotionally drained me more than any other season. And I'll talk about the reasons why, but it's probably just because these are some of the most emotionally draining people I've ever encountered on this show. <laughs> so if you have not subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Um, also, if you don't like me anymore, you're welcome to unsubscribe. <laughs> so you guys can tell me if you noticed this, but one of the first things I made note of on this season is how many of the people and how frequently people said, I just want someone to love me for me. Oh, when will someone just love me for the person that I am? And I know we've heard that occasionally in previous seasons, but I feel like this time, most people who were like the final contestants kind of reiterated some point of feeling like they haven't been able to experience the kind of love where people just see them as they are, which makes me very sad. But then also, I like that everyone seems a bit more um, reflective and open to knowing that that's something they're missing. We all know like a huge step of being able to find love, to give love and receive love is extending that love to yourself first. For me, a big part of that is accepting the love of Christ. That's a really great first step. <laughs> Just gotta throw that in there too. But once these people are able to do that, I feel like it sets them up for better success in romantic relationships anyway. I talked about it being like a pressure cooker that they were all experiencing. In a show like this, it's hard to take everything at face value and just ascribe a personality type to someone because they're locked in this cage for 10 days and then we expect them to like behave normally. But I will say after thinking about it, specifically for those like Lydia or a Johnny or an Izzy, all of these people are experiencing intensified emotions or reactions to things because of the type of scenario they're in. But I do think it's fair to make some sort of assessment on the type of person you're watching in that situation. Because when you're placed in a high pressure situation, you reveal the deepest parts of yourself. You reveal what's beneath, what's beneath is gonna come above. To cap off this little introduction piece, these are the people that I like. I'm gonna like place them here. And then these are the people that I dislike. <laughs> and by dislike, I do not mean as individuals. I mean that I don't think they belong on a show where they're getting married anytime soon. Okay, so one couple I kind of want to get out of the way is JP and Taylor. They're sweet. <laughs> but you guys know there's always that one couple that gets paired up that's just not that interesting to talk about. And that's not necessarily a bad thing when it comes to them. It's probably a good thing. I really like JP's voice. Which I'll say one thing about that too. Usually the people who end up together, they usually say to that person the first day they meet them, oh, I really like your voice or I love your voice. And I don't think in this case, I don't think Taylor said that about JP, um, but a lot of people who ended up with the people they were with liked their voices. I feel like that's a huge component. Like let's forget the love is blind part about seeing them because we all know they don't cast people who are fat. They don't cast people who have acne all over their face who have braces, et cetera, you know, whatever that you would consider like not that attractive. But there, a huge component of what makes these people like each other are their voices. You can say whatever you want, but if someone doesn't like the way your voice sounds, it's not happening. The other thing I wanna mention is when she called him sweet, and then he goes, yeah, my mom dipped me in sugar right when I was born. I thought that was the cutest thing. I don't know if he heard that somewhere, or just thought to say it, but I was just like, that's really cute. <laughs> I really enjoyed that he was vulnerable with her about his childhood. 
and he does strike me as someone who like locks it in real tight um and I feel like what he shared the little bit of what he shared might be a big piece of why he's this like stoic kind of like more more um even keel soft-spoken person today as an adult the last thing I'll say too is that when they met we all saw how awkward it was and how very clearly she was not as attracted to him as he was attracted to her but when she looked at him and in her side interview was like you know he has a gap i was like girl i have a gap <laughs> the man barely had a gap when she said that i like looked at him more deeply for the first time i was like oh yeah he has a gap like girl like, are you tripping that hard I don't know if she would have cared as much about his little tiny gap if he had what she was wanting which was the dirty blonde hair and the tan skin and I'm gonna use this opportunity to say this too one how many times when y'all watch love is blind did y'all see any guy in the living quarters who had that aesthetic like the dirty blonde hair and the tannish skin and then I'm gonna also say, how many times do you see that dude in real life? Like maybe if you live in California, I don't know. I live in the South. I live in the Southern part of the United States. And the state that I live in is still predominantly white. I rarely see a male with blonde hair. I rarely see a woman with natural blonde hair. It's not that common. I mean, am I tripping? Um, so I'm like, you're expecting this like, not anomaly, but you're expecting something that's probably not gonna happen like you're not in san diego um you're not at venice beach so i don't know it's just the expectations of something that's just completely unrealistic and then being disappointed and usually the people who don't try to think about what their spouse will look like before they meet them are more apt to embracing them for the person that they are. Okay, we're gonna talk a lot about Izzy, Johnny, and Stacy. I wouldn't even call this a love triangle because I feel like one thing I really liked about this season so far is that the people who were talking to multiple people were usually pretty transparent about it. Um, so they would let the other one know who was part of this love triangle dynamic that, hey, I'm having a stronger connection with this person. Johnny did that with Chris and Izzy. Um, Izzy did it with Stacy and Johnny. So people are sharing these things up front. It's not like a secret. So I feel like that diminished a lot of the drama between individuals like in their own living quarters, but I feel like it heightened the drama inside the pods. And that's why I feel like this season emotionally drained me so much because it's very tiring seeing people think that they're good at being manipulative. <laughs> And I say that intentionally, like y'all think you're good at manipulating. From what I've seen starting off, I'm seeing a lot more of that fall on the women this particular season. I witnessed it specifically with Johnny when she let Chris go, but then Izzy let her go. So she had to run back to Chris and say, I can imagine my life with you and blah, 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 blah. After she just told Izzy that she sees Chris as a brother type which isn't inherently offensive, but like it's weird that now you suddenly have this like incestuous vision of what your life will look like with Chris because you said he was your brother. <laughs> and then she comes to Izzy before he let her go and tried to basically pitch herself to him in a way as well. Oh, if I went with Chris, then that would have been my safe choice and I would have done that out of fear. And I feel like Stacy is your Chris basically saying that if Izzy were to pick Stacy, that's the equivalent as if, of if Johnny stayed with Chris. It's like, no, it's not the equivalent because y'all are different people. And one thing, if you know me personally, I can't stand a false equivalency. I don't like comparisons in general, unless they're caveated with the, you know, it's a comparison, but how much can you really compare? These are four different individuals. You could tell this is pissing me off. <laughs> So to come in a room and try to make somebody um, and try to manipulate someone into thinking, oh, I am making the safe choice. You don't know this man and you don't know Stacy and you don't know what they talk about in the pause. And then to kind of compare that to you and Chris's situation. But then you're going back and saying like how we discovered with Izzy and Chris talking in the pods about how she told one of them one thing, told one the other. She told Izzy oh, well, I always go for the safe choice and I'm not going to go do this out of fear. Like, I'm going with where my emotions lie. Goes back to Chris when Izzy rejected her and says, well, I always just fall into this bad pattern. Izzy is part of this bad pattern, so I need the safe, secure thing. 
And of course, we know it's a tool of manipulation that she was trying to use because she thinks these men are stupid. And I'm like, girl, you could have like, I say this from a not serious place, but if you were acting out of um, bad intention, girl, you could have easily came up with a better way of manipulating these people than that. You did a terrible job. <laughs> you get a D minus for your manipulation, um, which is good. I'd rather somebody be a terrible manipulator so you can see right through them. So yeah, that was my little side tangent, but I want to talk about Izzy specifically. I, <laughs> when I was watching him, something about him was off to me. I'm not going to say too many things and say something that could potentially come across as offensive. Um, but when I watched him, like he, his, he had those eyes, like there's a lot going on behind his eyes, but also a, not a lot going on behind those eyes. That can be a chill thing or that could be a very bad thing. And then y'all can, maybe y'all feel the same way. Maybe you kind of get where I'm coming from without me saying, I don't want to say things that are super negative. That just is so inappropriate, but he makes my soul feel unsettled and I don't know why. He also comes across to me like someone who's just trying his best to find a part of life that he fits into, which is a little sad. Like he talks about his history with his family being Jehovah's Witness. He talks about how he found out that the person he thought was his father was not his father. And I don't know if editing cut it out, but Johnny didn't seem to inquire at all about how he really felt about that or what that whole experience what life experiences followed him having that revelation about his family like maybe editing cut it out but i wouldn't be surprised if she just didn't ask for extra details because she doesn't care and then the last thing i did like about izzy is that he was to me always pretty clear with the women about where he stood he would talk about what he was getting from one that he wasn't seeing from the other one thing i liked about stacy is that she said do not compare me to others you have your own dynamic let's focus on my dynamic i know what i want if you don't want me, that's cool. I really like Stacy. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk in depth about that. <laughs> so going to Johnny now, Lord have mercy. Does she not look like Amanda Bynes to y'all a bit? She looks like Amanda Bynes to me. I wrote that she was double minded, um, but because she like flip flops, but I actually kind of take that back now because at this point I just see her as a manipulator. She called Izzy emotionally unavailable, I think in one of her side interviews after he dropped her. It's funny how your people's descriptions of, of others change when they get dropped. It's very interesting. Um, it makes you wonder if they're putting on a fake facade when they're trying to get with that person and now they're showing their true self or if they're just living in like the Lulu land and they're trying to like make themselves feel better. It's very interesting. But she called Izzy emotionally unavailable in her private interview. But beforehand, when they were still talking, she said, I want Izzy because he's the one that I have the deeper emotional connection with. So what emotions exactly are you connecting with Johnny? Because you just said he wasn't emotionally available. And then here's the other thing. You, Johnny, I'm gonna act like I'm talking to Johnny. You can't tell someone that you're a walking red flag multiple times in the same conversation, then share all of the ways that you are definitely a red flag and then expect them to have a nice reaction to that. Granted, when she tells Izzy about how her husband, her ex-husband was literally a rebound, as she put it, and she talks about how she dated an addict for years and the addict passed away very sad, of course, like, what kind of reaction exactly are you wanting Izzy to have? Like, of course he should have maybe allowed you to express yourself more or been appreciative that you shared that information. But it's like, girl, you told the man you're walking around a flag and he believed you. When people tell you who they are, believe them. When people show you who they are, believe them. Like... What is that, my Angelou? Like, come on. The last thing I'll say about her, I don't want to spend too long, but she's snaky. So she sits there and I think it's because she has like the doe eye look. I don't personally find her attractive, but um, she does have that effect where she could look at a guy and kind of like put them in that trance because she has those doughy big eyes. But in reality, her personality is so much more harsh. Meanwhile, Stacy presents in this a little bit more harsh personality because she's more vocal and like effervescent, etc but she's actually the sweeter soul. I loved when Izzy tried to talk about the Johnny situation to Stacy, and then Stacy just goes, well, yeah, she, like um, Johnny's on her own journey. She's on her own path. Like, I don't really know what that would look like for her, but you know, here I am with you right now. And she kind of just dropped it and let it go. I also like that she didn't talk about all her connections with people inside of the living quarters because she wanted to maintain a sense of autonomy over herself and not be influenced by people having their, she didn't want people in her ear, which is something I'll talk about later with people like Lydia, for example. When you have people, we have to, you have to be very cognizant of that. 
um, something I've had to learn too. You have to be careful who you confide in and share information with because why do y'all, why do people suddenly believe that everybody has your best interest at heart? Why would you believe that off the bat? Not to say that I'm a pessimistic person. I believe I'm fairly optimistic, but I would never walk into a room full of 20 people and think that any of them have my best interest at heart because here's the thing. Most people don't even have their best interest at heart. Let's be for real, <laughs> you know? The other thing I liked about Stacy is from what I saw on the women's side, she's the only one who wasn't overly divulging lovey-dovey sort of sentiments towards Izzy or towards the man she was speaking with. So he asked her, where do you feel like you're on this love spectrum or where do you feel like you're falling on that? On that? And she was like, well, I'll let you know when the time is right. She seems like a very mature, um, self-aware person and Based on the previews, it seems like Izzy's gonna fuck it up, <laughs> which is unsurprising, but I like her. She is my favorite person by far um, on this season so far. Y'all, I forgot something I had to say about Johnny, okay? <laughs> Two things about Johnny. One, when she dropped Chris and he was having this emotional reaction and as they're communicating, she's like slowly picking up her items so she can walk out of the room. She barely even gave him a second to respond and she was about to dip. She could care less. I feel like that says a lot about her, but we've already seen a lot more about her to give us even more clarity. The other thing about Johnny, I about fell out my seat laughing when she's like talking to some chick in the, in the living quarters and she's like, yeah, and you know, Izzy, like he told me he had bad credit and he's about to move. So it's just, it's just downhill for, from there with him. I'm like, the amount of mental gymnastics that individuals do to avoid pain, to avoid accountability for what just happened or like acceptance, acceptance is the word. People so desperately don't want to accept reality for what it is that they're more willing to make up these silly little excuses for why, why the universe just didn't let it work out, you know? I also felt that way about um, Lydia even though we're gonna talk about them right now. <laughs> but I also feel that way about Lydia when Izzy told her that he didn't wanna to talk to her. And this is a lesson for all women, I feel like, cause I feel like we're the worst about this. If a man gets rejected, it hurts him, he moves on, whatever. If a woman gets rejected, I've seen so much more commonly, like we wanna ask like, why? What's the reason why? And y'all, for men, the reason why is that they don't like you. Like there's literally, it ain't that deep. Now there are situations where if you're with a man and then something suddenly happens, okay, maybe he's a douchebag. Maybe he was talking to multiple women and then he moved on to the next one. Um, and he liked you, but not enough. So it's still an issue of not liking you. Or um, he doesn't like you anymore because you cheated on him or because he found out you're a bad person. Like there are some concrete instances that can occur. But typically if you don't understand the reason why from something that just occurred, it's just because he doesn't like you. Like he's just not that into you. And Izzy very, ooh, it just got darker in here. Izzy clearly verbalized that to her and said, I'm having stronger connections. But then um, Lydia goes on to say, I don't know why he dropped me. It's just like the the lack of acceptance that happens from these people at, the, at their big ages <laughs> is unacceptable. So I don't watch these shows to find people to have crushes on and then go follow them on Instagram. I'm not saying any of y'all do that either, but I'm just like, I'm not watching this show looking for someone who I can hit up once their like engagement on a TV show doesn't work out. But um, I did find Uche to be attractive. I love his smile. Oh my God, I love his smile so much. I wrote about Uche that I'm sure a lot of people watching the show, and again, I, I haven't watched any commentary. I don't have Twitter. I barely use Instagram, whatever. But um, I'm sure a lot of people would find Uche to be condescending. But I'll say this. Everybody can have those moments where they're a little condescending, where they're a little bit whatever. But I like him. I feel like he's a realist. I feel like he's pretty respectful when he speaks. Um, we'll talk about the whole cheating conversation he had with Aaliyah. I really like people who are straightforward. I feel like I'm pretty straightforward and I just see him as a grown man. Now, I say that with a grain of salt because as we'll come to find um, in one of the last episodes that Uche and Lydia dated previously before this experiment, it's hard for me to accept when people like Uche give you this whole grown man, like I got my stuff together, I'm 33, whatever. But then bro, 
you knew you were going to be cast on Love is Blind before you hopped on this show. What are you doing sleeping with someone, anyone, three months prior? Now, I know we live in a different culture today in the world. I know we do. So people may hear me say that and be like, that's not weird or that's a long time. But if you're literally about to hop on a show preparing to potentially find your wife, what interest do you have in sleeping with people, especially people who you broke up with? And it's like just a clearly like y'all see it's like to become a friends with benefits situation because him and Lydia dated. So to be sleeping with her three months before the show started and same for her, I'm not putting it all on him for her too. What are y'all doing? And I know when it comes to Lydia, I'm kind of hopping around here, but I'll, I'll land the plane. When it comes to Lydia, y'all think about how hurt or disgruntled at the very least she had to be for him not to even recognize her voice. Y'all, she has an accent. He didn't even recognize her voice for like the first minute, two minutes she was speaking to him and to, to where he could finally guess. Um, but you just slept with this man three months ago. Like she doesn't speak to this in her interviews, but I'm like, y'all know in her head, she's thinking, dang, I literally slept with this man three months ago. He doesn't even remember my voice. It's very interesting. It goes to show like, I think it's a good lesson for women. Like be careful who you're just giving your body to because she dated this man, was in this relationship with him. He told Aaliyah he never even loved the girl. But you're sleeping with this man, you just admitted on national television, and he made it very clear, clear he has no feelings towards you. It's very embarrassing, to be honest. So getting to Aaliyah and Uche, because they're the real, the true couple dynamic in this scenario, I found it interesting that he talks about how he's doing his own personal business stuff and how Aaliyah said she'd love to work for herself and she'd love to be with someone who can kind of put her on and bring her into that space, kind of teach her in that way. And it's interesting because Uche does kind of give this like, I'm going to teach you type of attitude, which is where I think a lot of people might feel like the condescension comes in. But it's funny because when they have those moments in the pause where he's trying to like hold her accountable or ask her to reflect on certain things, she does not seem receptive to it. She seems pretty annoyed by it. it may be an unpopular opinion. It may be a popular opinion. I don't know because I haven't watched what other people are saying. But I feel like the way he handled the information he was given about her being a previous cheater was not that like out of place. Like I feel like it was a pretty normal reaction to have. Um, I, I can't even say it was a sense of judgment because I'm gonna be totally honest. Usually when I'm judging somebody, I'm not even asking any questions. I The judgment is there. <laughs> um, Uche took time to ask her questions, self-reflective questions. He told her, oh, I, that's not good. Like, it's true. It's not good. But people want to say, like, they want to use the word on oh, being judged. It's like, no, you're embarrassed and you feel ashamed. You feeling ashamed and him judging you are not, um, they're mutually exclusive. So they don't have to exist at the same time. They can exist separately. And from what I'm seeing is you felt shame, but you wanted to place um, the responsibility of that shame onto him by saying he was judging you rather than the shame of what you actually did, which was cheat on your ex, which is what Uche was trying to talk to you about. He literally said to her, well, why didn't you tell him? You could have just left him and blah, 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 blah. And she acted like she understood where he was coming from, but then she hits him with the, well, I have needs. I had needs too. I'm like, if I were him in that moment, the fact that she pushed back with that statement two years after she cheated, I would automatically be like, this is not a good sign. And then I love that he asked her, how long did you stay with him after you cheated on him? And she said, she said a couple months. Very telling as well, because um, she also told him that she did not sleep with that man again after that. But we all know how situations like that work. And let's not pretend like she didn't at the very least communicate with that man again um, after cheating or that she didn't see him again. So that's a moot point altogether. Y'all can tell me, like, do y'all consider two years a long time ago to have cheated or a short time because they were kind of having an argument about that. But here's what I'll also say. It's irrelevant for two reasons in, in their context. They both just talked about how non-negotiable for them is honesty. And in the present day, in present moment, a person um, is who they are today. And you can't just make past judgment on who they're gonna be for the rest of their lives based off of an instance or a mistake they made in the past. We all make mistakes, okay? So here's the thing. She didn't have to be honest, but she chose to be honest. She does not get brownie points for that, but she was honest about her cheating. 
And two, even if she wasn't a cheater, bro, <laughs> even if she wasn't a cheater, she could still cheat on you. Even if she's never cheated before, she can cheat on you. And then if she cheated on every other person she's been with, she may not cheat on you because she's changed, because she's evolved, because she's grown, because she's a mature person, because she's taking accountability for her actions. Still doesn't look like she's taking accountability. Um, but I'm like, to sit here and do a tit for tat about like, well, how do I know you're not going to cheat on me and this and that? You don't know. But you also don't know if she's going to like curse you out every night before bed. And she also doesn't know if you're going to hit her. And all these other things, like there's a lot of you don't knows. The best you can do is get to know each other and then set expectations for one another as it as it comes to how you act in a relationship, in a partnership. And if someone seems to be straying away from those expectations, how about you don't get married? How about you? I don't know. And this, this type of argument begs the question of like, no one should be doing a show like this anyway, because you should be taking way longer to get to know someone's character. Okay, so lastly, I want to talk about Lydia. Lydia, Lydia, Lydia. She's a mixed bag. I'll also talk about Milton briefly because that's who it's looking like she's going to be paired with. I don't know. Um, oh yeah, she's going to be paired with him. They got engaged. <laughs> Their relationship is like kaput to me. Like, is that the word? It's meaningless. The first thing I wrote about Lydia, like literally the first word I wrote about Lydia is weirdo. You're a weirdo. <laughs> She struck me as odd the first time that Aaliyah came in being upset about the cheating conversation she had with Uche. And she says to Aaliyah, well, he should be smart enough to know blah, 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 or he's dealing with stuff on his own time and he needs to work that out as smart as he is. She's like, well, you know, I love you. And then on multiple occasions, like telling her, look at me and I, look at me, look at me. And saying like, we're more similar than you think. We're the same, we're the same, we're the same. Y'all, it might be easy for me to say now, be like, I thought she was weird now having all the information, but I'm telling you guys, before it was revealed that Uche and Lydia had had a past dating experience, I thought there's something weird going on with this girl. And the exact phrase that I put down on my paper was like the movie Roommates. Have y'all ever seen that movie? Where like, it's this obsessive kind of relationship with one woman and the other and the kind of relationship that she has, just this obsession. And Lydia gives that vibe, y'all. And I know she says like, oh, because I'm genuine and I love hard and blah, blah, blah. But I think that she's a little bit, she got something going on, y'all. <laughs> Let me ask y'all this. Do you think her attraction to Aaliyah and their friendship would have been as strong or as such a priority for her if she didn't know that Aaliyah was connecting with Uche? Or do y'all think it's purely a coincidence? Because she says it's because her and Aaliyah are so similar. I don't think her and Aaliyah are similar at all. Let's be totally honest. I barely saw any of Aaliyah's personality in these first couple episodes. So I'm like, Lydia, you, she, I think Lydia is just trying to convince her like, oh, we're so similar. We're so similar. How? How? Are you expected to believe that she just wanted to be friends with Aaliyah because they're just so similar? Or are you just trying to convince Aaliyah of that because now you know that the man that you wanted is with her? I mean... Lydia, you were with this man three months ago. Clearly there's some lingering feelings there, especially because did y'all know how Lydia tried to reframe how their conversation went on, on day one? Because they showed it to us. So it very clearly showed that when they entered the space, Lydia, Lydia asked him, should we just start from ground zero? She asked him that, unless I'm tripping. Um, but then she told Aaliyah that he brought that up and then also said that he was like, oh no, well, then the experiment won't be real, which is what he said, but he never said the part about starting from ground zero. And then for her to sit there with Aaliyah and then continue, oh, well, you know, I know all his friends and his dog and his house is so cool. It's like a tri-level house. It's giving roommates obsessive, like it's, it's very strange to me. And I feel like at this point, which we kind of, allude, they allude to it in the preview, at this point, I just think she's going to stick with, what is his name? Milton. I keep wanting to call him Marlon. Um, at this point, I think she just wants to stick with Milton so that she can see Uche again. I really think it's going that deep. Um, we saw that Aaliyah kind of left the experiment. Something tells me she's either going to come back to the experiment or Johnny and Chris are going to come back together in the experiment because there's only three couples. There's only three couples. And I'm sorry, but I'm not watching J.P. Taylor Izzy and Stacy and Milton and, L and Lydia. I'm not doing that. <laughs> the last thing I'll say about Lydia is 
she was one of the main people to keep saying, I just want someone to love me for, for me, love me for me, love me for me. And of course, the most obvious statement you could say, which I said in the beginning of this video is, well, you could love yourself for you. And if you don't love yourself for you, you need to figure out what's the disconnect. Why don't you? Because here's the thing. You can love yourself for you with your flaws and all and then even correct those flaws and still be loving yourself. But maybe she has something going on to where I would never say someone's undeserving of a, of a relationship. But if she feels it this, this deeply in her core that she's not being accepted for herself, maybe fundamentally there's some things that she really needs to take time to reflect on and work on. She also said to Aaliyah when they were cuddled up on the couch, intertwining fingers. I'm sorry, y'all. I can't take it seriously. <laughs> She said, I have never been loved. And so I'm like, your parents didn't love you? Your siblings, if you had them, didn't love you? Um, You never loved you? God never loved you? <sighs> We've all heard this before. And if you haven't heard it, then I guess it's great that you're watching this video right now. But it's dang near impossible to extend genuine, compassionate, unconditional love to someone when you don't even have the experience of love in your own soul. How are you going to extend that love? You're extending something to someone. You're extending care. You're extending affection. You're extending obsession. You're extending infatuation, which is what I see a lot of from Lydia, even with Milton. Because I'm like, girl, you don't like this man. Once he started talking about those bentonite rocks, you were over it. <laughs> So that is all I have for you guys today. Tell me what you think of the people below. I really like to see you all's comments. Uh, subscribe, like the video, or like I said earlier, unsubscribe if you don't want to be here because you don't have to be here, but I love you anyway. <laughs> have a great rest of your day and I will see you all next week for the next review. Y'all, I feel so bad. I left Milton out. I like him because he has ridiculous hair. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say ridiculous. I like him because he has a unique hairstyle. I like him because he's silly and goofy. And I like that he took the leap to see if he could find someone he had a true connection with. And the way he proposed, it was very funny to me. <laughs> so I don't take him too seriously in the sense that he's young and I don't think he should be there. But I do think he's a sweet guy. All right, bye.